Morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. That's nice. <laughs> Make me feel good. <laughs> um, let's just turn right in Ephesians three twenty. Of this message, it's uh, it's up to you, it's up to us. Um, Ephesians three twenty. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we can ask or think, according to the power that works within us. I've hit hit on this before, <clears throat> but after the revelation I got on Romans eight eleven about a month ago, I I went back to this. Now, him who is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think, and it's not up to him, it's up to us, according to the power that works within us. Um, and that, that word power there is the word dunamis. I've heard you preach on that, on dunamis, on that, that power. Uh, where do we get the power? So let's go Acts 1.8. I'm going to be going... Through a whole lot of scripture. Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power, the same word, dunamis. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, even to the remotest parts of the earth. So this is how you get it. You receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I know Mike's, he, a couple months ago or whatever, he preached about the free gift, you know, the Holy Ghost. It's here for you. Amen. And I'm going to either say either people don't have the Holy Ghost or they're chicken. <laughs> One of the two. I'm just being honest. <laughs> because I don't see stuff that I see in the Bible working. Man, he was just talking about that. About we just do what it says to do. That's it. It's simple. But yet, we, I don't see that happening. And I can see it in my household, but even sometimes I'm chicken, okay? I'm going to be honest. Um, Acts 1.5. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So we've got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to receive this power. This power, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go right back to Ephesians 3. <clears throat> Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think according to the power. This power comes by the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You won't have that power till the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Okay? So without that power, God is not able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think. Because it's according to the power that works within you. Alright. Um, Luke 3.16 <clears throat> Says, um, they came to John and uh, was asking him. Uh, I think the Pharisees came to John, and he answers in John three, or, uh, Luke three sixteen. John answered and said to them all, "As for me, I baptize you with water, but one is coming, one is coming who is mightier than I. I am not fit to untie his thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire." Uh, Matthew 28, 18. Uh, you ain't got to turn there, but I will real fast. Um, says, it's where Jesus is leaving out. He says, uh, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been, give, been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. <clears throat> Notice here he says, make disciples, not converts, not believers, but disciples. And I just began thinking, what if this baptism, he says here, because I looked that word up, it's all the same word, the baptize. What if he's meaning here baptizing them not in water, but in fire and the Holy Ghost? Have you ever thought about that? What if 
we ain't talking about water. Every church you'll go to, I'll guarantee you that they baptize in water. How many baptize in the Holy Ghost? How many when they said, hey, I, I, I'm going to step out and I want to believe and I, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And they go, okay, go ahead and come up here. We're going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. I, that hit me. And I'm, what if they ain't even, <sighs> Acts 19. <clears throat> One through six, <clears throat> Paul and Ephesus. And it came about <clears throat> while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper uh, country, came to Ephesus and found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we've never even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Then what were you in what were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. See, they were baptized in the water. And he said, You received the Holy Spirit when you're baptized. And they said, no, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Well, then what were you baptized into? It sounds like here that Paul wasn't even baptizing in water. It sounds like he was going around baptizing in the Holy Ghost. Doesn't, I mean, is it just this is mayor? <clears throat> and Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them. They began speaking with tongues and prophesying. Notice Jesus says, all, all authority has been given to me. And he said, go forth, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now when we baptize the water, they don't want to say, I baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, guess what? Paul did it here, and he says, he baptized him. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they received the Holy Ghost. This is what church is missing. This is it. We need to pull all the baptismal things out and we need to put fire back there baptizing the Holy Spirit fire <laughs> hey I'm just being honest this is what I'm getting revealed to me I mean this is this is big to me how many years have we had this wrong and I'm not saying that a baptism of repentance ain't bad that's fine it is right but we're missing the Holy Ghost we're missing the power this is why God cannot do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think. Right. Because the power don't work within you. Because mm -hmm. you ain't got it. Amen. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, John 14, 26. I just started thinking, you know, beside, why do we need the Holy Ghost? Because a lot of people is like, well, I'm fine. I mean, I go to work every day. I come home every day. Everything's great. What do I need it for? Uh, John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said. <clears throat> I like that he puts Helper here because, you know, that's what my wife is. She's my Helper. She comes okay. alongside I'll go further now in a second. And he'll teach you all things, bring you remembrance all things. A lot of times, whenever I'm talking with somebody or I got something going on or something pops up, me and Michael just talking about this, the Holy Ghost sounds just like me. Mm -hmm. He does. He sounds just like me. But he brings that to remembrance. And whenever I was first filled and this started happening, I thought, oh, that's just me speaking. Well, guess what? It's not. He brings it to my remembrance. Mm -hmm. He does this. This is what he does. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, John 16, 13 says, But he, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. Again, he sounds like me. He speaks to me. And he speaks what he hears. And he'll disclose it to me. He is my guide. He, he doesn't. I said he's my helper. He comes alongside. He's my helper. He is not going to drag me. He is a helper. My wife doesn't pull us 
I, I like what Tim said one time about he took a rib and put it and made the woman so we could go side by side. He didn't take a tailbone or, you know, something else. <laughs> Psalm 32, 8, 9 says, I will guide thee with my eye. I will guide thee with my eye, not as a horse, which have no understanding, but whose mouth must be kept. Whose mouth must be held with bit and bridle. That's how you got a horse with a bit and bridle, right? right? You get some stubborn. Let's say you get the best horse you could find. That horse, even if you get on it and it requires no bit and bridle, because I have trained several that don't, it's all leg pressure. And how you're sitting in the saddle. But even at those best ones, I can't guide that horse with my eye. You see, mm -hmm. I have to use my legs. You're going to have to push this thing around. It can't read my mind. But here it says, I will guide thee with my eye. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to drag us around. With the eye that's in your head, he's going to guide you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. <clears throat> How did the Holy Spirit guide Jesus? Acts 10, 38. And I'm going I'm to end up having to turn there just because I just saw someone blank. Um, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He guided him. He healed all. If they were oppressed, he healed them. That's how he got them. I'm, I'm going to look at some scriptures here that I have never, a lot of times we struggle with, well, did they have faith or do I need faith? Or does he have faith? Or if I do this, do they need faith? Who's the one need faith here? I'm going to look at just some different things here. Um, <clears throat> Mark 3, 1 through 5. And Jesus entered the synagogue on the... And Jesus entered into a synagogue, and a man was there with withered hand. They were watching him, wondering to see if he would heal because it was the Sabbath, in order they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Rise and come forward. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or do harm, to save a life or kill it? But they kept silent. After looking around at them with and after looking around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, he said to them, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out with restored. So here, who here had faith is my, kind of my question. And how did the Spirit guide Jesus? Jesus seen a need. A guy had a withered hand. The guy didn't run to him and say, hey, heal me. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus says, come here. Rise mm -hmm. and come forward. Now, it probably took a little faith on that guy's part to rise and come forward, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming we could go there. But even if it didn't, He's seen the need and he just met the need. Mm -hmm. That's how the Holy Spirit guides. It sees a need and it just meets it. I have a lot. So um, in Luke 13, it's talking about the woman uh, that was bent double. How much is there? Showing you how to turn all these. Luke 13, 11 through 13. A woman who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. She was bent double and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are free from your sickness. He laid his hands upon her. Immediately she was made erect again and began glorifying God. That woman, again, didn't run to him. He seen, he seen a woman. There was a woman who had, had a sickness. She was bent double. When he saw her, that's how the Spirit guides. With your eye, I will guide you. He saw her. He saw a need. I mean, she's got a, a, a devil, whatever. Come here. And he said, woman, you're free from your sickness. Um, and I have never heard, I'm, we're going to go here because I've never heard anybody seem like use this Luke 22. Um. Forty 
49 to 51. Uh, this is whenever Judas betrays Jesus. And when those who were around him saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And a certain one of them struck the slave of the high priest, cut off his right ear. Jesus said, stop no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Who had faith in this one? <laughs> Seriously. You think that that guy had the faith? You think he believed in Jesus, but yet they were coming to arrest him? And, they, and who cut the ear off? This is great because this is Jesus' disciples who <laughs> cut their ear off. But yet Jesus, he just seen the need and he met the need. See, I mean, he wasn't chicken. He knew that God was able to do exceedingly abundant beyond he could ask or think. <clears throat> um. I mean, I've got, I've got so many more situations that I looked up that I thought, I mean, it's like the water to wine. Who, who there had the faith? I mean, the mother could have, but she didn't have, she, I don't think she understood or knew or she knew that he must have had power. She knew stuff was divine, but yet she said, just do whatever he says. And that's what happened. In all these situations, Jesus saw a need and, me, and, and, uh, and met it. And then I saw them in several places where it said that he was moved with compassion. And I looked at the difference with pity and compassion. Pity says, oh, I'm so sorry. Compassion says, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me help you. Amen. See, in, in, these, in these, uh, all these other situations, it says that he was moved with compassion. He saw a need and was moved with compassion. And he, and he did something about it. Amen. That's how we should be. That's how the Holy Spirit guides us. It guides us with Compassion. Amen. We see a need, and then we go meet the need. <clears throat> Remember, it ain't you doing it. You're just the vessel that God's using. Right. It's Him doing it, Amen. but He has to use you. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. First uh, John three eight says, "The Son of God appeared for this purpose that He might destroy the works of the devil." You reckon that's the will of God to destroy the works of the devil? That's why He appeared for that purpose that He might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was the master, and we're just going to do what he did. So, we, I mean, once we're filled with the Spirit, we should be the same. We should want to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And y'all can't tell me that in every time you go to the grocery store or work or anywhere else, we can see the works of the devil working in people. Right. People are afflicted and tormented and all this stuff. That's what we should want to do is destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And it ain't us doing it. He's using us, but it's him doing it. Right. Um, <clears throat> um, Matthew 9. Whenever he gave, when Jesus gave uh, Matthew 9, 35. When Jesus sent the 12 out. It says that Jesus was going about all the cities, villages, teaching their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease and every sickness. It's just funny here that he, he was healing everything, everything that was coming his way. Not one time, we all know that's not the will of God is not to heal. He, God never put anything on anybody because it says he was healing every kind of disease, every sickness, seeing the multitudes. He felt compassion for them. They were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. So now he feels compassion. And he looks at his disciples and he says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And right after that, he says, he summoned his twelve and he gave them authority. This, so he says, we need help. And he summoned his twelve and he gave them authority because he had compassion. He made more people that could do what he did. He sent them out as apostles. He sent them out and, and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Um, verse 5 in chapter 10. Then uh, the twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, saying, Do not go away the Gentiles. Do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely receive. Freely you've received. Now freely give. How did they know who to touch? You reckon the Holy Spirit told them? 
or were they guided with his eye? The Holy Spirit told him that they were guided with his eye. If they saw a need, they met it. How do you know who to raise the dead? Because they're dead. <laughs> How do you know who to heal? Because they're sick. You see, it's that simple. Amen. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I mean, I know they're sick, but the Holy Spirit ain't told me. That, that you see a need and you just meet the need. Um. At UPS, I was at management, and I remember I had a boss at one time, and he was he was just wanting anybody's ever been in management. You want people to take ownership of situations, ownership of whatever, act like you own the place. And I remember him saying, "It shouldn't matter whether anybody else shows up for work at all, as long as you walk through that door." Everything should be done. And I'm like, man, that's a lot. But that's the way it should be. If you're in a high management position, it shouldn't matter whether everybody shows up or not. I mean, Timmy, you think about it, it's your job. It don't matter whether the people show up or not. You're going to get it done, right? You know what's got to get done. And I know that's how you are, too. You know what's got to get done. You'll get it done. <clears throat> All authority has been given to us on heaven and on earth. That's what Jesus said. When you walk into a room, it shouldn't matter if everybody is full of a demon or not. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, that's all that should matter. That's it. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. It can be accomplished now. I, mean, that, I know that's a lot on one person, but that's how we should feel. All authority has been given. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 28. <clears throat> I get lost sometimes. So, what are you saying, Randall? That's, I wrote that down. What are you saying, Randall? <laughs> <laughs> you been there? <laughs> God is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think. And most of the church stops right there. According to the power that works within you. If you don't have the power, it won't work. God is not able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time that I preached, I preached on Romans 8 11. And I actually I went back there because I was like, man, this is, this is good. God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask or think. According to the power that works within us. But without the power, it won't work. We have to have the power. And that power is in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of heaven is in the Holy Ghost. Right. You want to walk in that kingdom, you're going to have to have the Holy Ghost. That's what we need to be baptizing people in. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to start in 8, 11, uh, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells you. So then, brethren, we are not under obligation not to the... So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you must die. But if to the spirit you're putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led, not dragged, for all who are being led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, for which we cry out, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Um, when I read, when I went back and reread Romans, I, this scripture right here, I started thinking, this is the word that I had all week, actually, was, if a son sets you free, you're free indeed. And I thought, what does this mean, and how can I... I, I couldn't come up with anything. And I, I just began in that Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond all we ask or think according to the power that works within, within us. And God says, you're a son, that we're sons. For all who are being led, we're being led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. And then in John um, 8, he says... Uh, Jesus, 
therefore say to the Jews who have believed, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. You'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. Let me skip down. Let's see. Uh, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. And the slave does not remain forever, but the son does remain forever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That, that is exactly what, what is going on. We are not free in people. People are walking around enslaved. And as a son, that's what we should do. What the Spirit is leading us, we are sons of God, right? And he says here, if the son shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. So I'm going to tell you right now, as a son of God, I'm making everybody free. You got something going on, you're free. It's that simple. I ain't scared. I ain't scared anymore. You're free. All right? <clears throat> and uh, let's, I, I can't get over Mark 16. Uh, Tim hit this morning here. Mark 16, whenever, uh, whenever Jesus appeared after he had rose from the dead. In verse 15, he said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. He who is believed, then baptized, shall be saved. Notice here, this baptized is the same word, and I'm wondering who, who, who he who is believed and been baptized in the Holy Ghost, they'll be saved. But he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. And these signs will follow them that, who is believed in my name. They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. They went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by signs that followed. He confirmed the word by the signs that followed. He confirmed it. The signs followed. He confirmed the word by the signs that followed. Those signs, those attesting miracles that were accomplished, were followed by the word. And I began thinking, man, that is great. That is awesome. So they understood that God could do exceedingly abundant beyond all they could ask or think according to the power that worked with him. The signs followed that. Him that believed, that would lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. Those signs followed his word. They went out and preached the word, and the signs followed the word. That's exactly how it worked. We're, pre we're scared to preach the word, I think, to people. We're scared to speak the word to people. That's why the signs don't follow. It, it's either that or you ain't got the Holy Ghost. It's one or the other, I guess. Um, and I started thinking, well, I wonder what they preached. You know, we can look through and see different things they preached. And you're going to be like, oh, man, well, this is far-fetched. Maybe you're not. In Luke 4, 18, when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he said, and he closed the book. And I realized, well, he ain't, he ain't done speaking. But I wonder if any of the uh, disciples, if they ever said this. <coughs> because this is good news, right? Amen. He said, oh, I don't know. I, no, Jesus said that because he says here, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Well, I wonder if any of the other ones did this. So then I went to Isaiah 61, where this is come from. This is where he opened the scroll, and this is where Jesus read from. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. This is where he shut the book. What's the next line say? And the day of vengeance. Our God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People can preach the day of vengeance of our God, but that is not what Jesus preached. He didn't preach that. He stopped there. This is a favorable year, and it's been favorable for 2,000 years. Amen. The day of vengeance of our God is not here. Right. It will come. That's okay to preach, but I'll guarantee you 99, well, 90% 90 of the churches in America is preaching today the day of vengeance of our God. And they're not preaching what's before that. Right. Mm -hmm. He has sent me here. 
He has anointed me. I'm going I'm to go right back. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery sites of the vine, to set free those who are down trying to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. I just love that. Then he closed the book and he handed it back because the day of vengeance of our God is not yet here. Are y'all getting this? Amen. <clears throat> God is able to do exceedingly abundant, beyond all we can ask or think, according to the power that works within you. Okay? It's the power that works within you. That power is in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in the kingdom of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God. So I, I'm saying it's up to you. It's up to you. It's according to the power that works within you. I still think that if you don't want the power, you don't have to have it. You can probably still get things off of me or off of him or off of him or, or whatever. But don't y'all want the power mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to see people healed? Mm-hmm. Don't you want to see things accomplished? God didn't make us to be like mountain climbers. Like I, I heard that before. He didn't make us to be a mountain climber. Man, what are you talking about? He told us to speak to the mountain. Amen. Now, could you just seriously imagine me and you going somewhere, and there's a humongous mountain in our way, and I go, in the name of Jesus, you go to the sea, and it just leaves. Oh, that's, that's far-fetched. That's what it says. I'm just saying, let's just do what it says to do. And the, the signs will follow the word. Stop being a chicken. Just do it. Just Let's just do what it says to do. And I really think that the signs will follow. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> it's always hard for me to end. Um, something Tim had said this morning. You said something about more faith. We need more faith. When people say we need more faith, and I was actually thinking on this, and it took me to whenever they went to John and said Jesus is baptizing more people than you're baptizing. He said, he must increase and I must decrease. And that's the same thing. I don't know if we need more Holy Ghost and more faith. I think that we need to decrease. And he'll automatically increase. Mm -hmm. But you've already got that same level that you need now. You just need to decrease. We need to push the flesh back and stop living through the lust of the flesh and just let the spirit rule. It will look like he's increasing, but I really don't know if he can give you any more than you've already got if you've got it. Amen. All right. I think I'm done. <laughs> Anybody got anything?